The Kaima King, flanked by his most trusted generals, came to the doors of the Dwemer. The Golden King was resplendent in his ceremonial arms and armor. He was Saint Nerevar, Moon and Star, and his eyes beamed with the magic in between realms of twilight. The Dwarven King opened the heavy brass doors to the fortress at the core of his kingdom, and then Nerevar spoke. You must give up your worship of the heart of Lorcan, or I shall forget our friendship and the deeds that were accomplished in its name. Dumak Dwarf King gazed upon his former friend in disbelief. Nerevar had always been quick to smile, a regal myrrh with a visage that inspired loyalty and could put even the most stubborn dwarf at ease. But instead of eyes, Dumak saw only the emotionless black pits of Nerevar's saffron-hued helm. We shall not relinquish that which has been our way for years beyond reckoning, just as the Kaima will not relinquish their ties to the lords and ladies of Oblivion. And to come at my door in this way, arrayed in arms and armour, with your hosts around you, tells me that you have already forgotten our friendship. Stand down, my sweet Nerevar, or I swear by the fifteen and one golden tones I shall kill you and all your people. Nerevar and his generals turned their backs on the brass doors of Vardenfell and marched back to their strongholds. Dumak's guest rooms had once glowed with the welcoming warmth of gaslight braziers. His halls had once echoed with mirthful laughter at the coming of the Kaima, but their hospitality was at an end. The Kaima and the Dwemer went to war, and it was all because of one secret. A secret well kept by the chief tonal architect of the Dwemer, High Lord Kagrinak. Kagrinak had discovered the still-beating heart of the trickster god Lorcan, and he had forged the tools needed to tap its divine power. The potential apotheosis of the dwarves was the most egregious blasphemy in the eyes of the Kaima. The War of the First Council culminated at the Battle of Red Mountain, where Kagrinak realised there was no more time. The Kaima were coming. He could either act now or surrender. By secret means, Nerevar and his companions made their way into the Heart Chamber. There, Nerevar the Kaima King met Dumak the Dwarf King, and they both collapsed from grievous wounds and draining magics. With Dumak fallen, and threatened by Dagoth Ur and others, Kagrinak turned his tools upon the heart, and Nerevar said he saw Kagrinak and all his Dwemer companions at once disappear from the world. The entire race vanished in an instant, but how? This is the greatest mystery in the Elder Scrolls universe, and today I'm going to share with you the five weirdest theories out there. So let's get started. Number one, the Dwemer were punished by Azura for their profanity and turned to ash. When Kagranak struck the heart with his tools, the tribunal and their armies watched as the Dwemer turned into dust all around them as their stolen immortality was taken away. Now, Kagranak may have been the first to use the tools on the heart, but he was not the last. A big part of the mystery is that we can't ask the Chief Tonal Architect what happened. When Kagranak failed, Sofa Sil studied the tools in the heart and figured out how to safely use its power. Thus, the tribunal of Vivek, Almalexia, and Sofa Sil became demigods. But their deed was not without detriment, and they were punished. In the words of Vivek, no sooner than we had completed our rituals and begun to discover our newfound powers, the Daedra Lord Azura appeared and cursed us for our Forsworn Oaths. And then, in that moment, all Kaima changed into Dunma, and our skins turned ashen, and our eyes into fire. Of course, we only knew at that time that this had happened to us, but Azura said, This is not my act, but your act. You have chosen your fate, and the fate of your people, and all the Dunma shall share your fate, from now to the end of time. You think yourselves gods, but you are blind, and all is darkness. What if the Dwemer too had been punished? As a race, the Dwemer constantly mocked the gods, whereas the Kaima were a pious people. Azura turned the golden skin of the Kaima to ash. What if Azura's punishment of the dwarves was similar, but even more severe than the punishment of her beloved Kaima turned Dunma? This might explain why the text Nerevar at Red Mountain explicitly states that the Dwemer turned to dust. Number two, the Dwemer were displaced to an outer realm. Now, if we assume that Kagranak was in fact successful, and the fate of the Dwemer was not some final mortal punishment, then numerous possibilities open up. One of these comes from perhaps the most fascinating living Myrrh in Tamriel. When the Dwemer vanished, one dwarf remained. His name is Yagram Bagan, 
Bagan had avoided the fate of his kin because he'd been in an outer realm at the time of the disappearance. Unfortunately, Bagan does not elaborate on the nature of this outer realm, though the manifold planes of oblivion seem like the obvious explanation. I wonder why Bagan's location was relevant in the first place. If Kagranak's fate could mystically affect all other Dwemer, why would being within the mortal realm matter? It does lean into the idea that the dwarves were punished, and punished by a god whose power was limited to the mortal realm. Either way, Yagram Bagan offers an alternate, albeit vague, hypothesis for what happened. He suggests that Kagranak might have succeeded in granting our race eternal life, with unforeseen consequences, such as wholesale displacement to an outer realm. Number 3. The Dwemer Zero Summed This is the most common theory, this is the one I subscribe to, and the one I find most satisfying because it really epitomizes the hubris of Dwemer intellect. So what is zero summing? Well, I'll try to keep this as simple as possible, but there are methods of achieving enlightenment in the Elder Scrolls. It's possible for mere mortals to discover the true nature of the Orbis, to transcend the confines of the mortal realm of Mundus. Some gods even encourage this, like Boethia teaching the Kaima the rules of Sijic endeavor. The most well-known form of achieving enlightenment is Kim, the secret syllable of royalty. We hear a lot about this spiritual journey from Vivek, who managed to reach this state of Nirvana. Vivek's ascension taught him that the Elder Scrolls universe is nothing more than a dream, projecting from the mind of the Godhead. This revelation proves to the individual that they do not exist, but Vivek's ego allowed him to maintain his sense of self, despite the weight of the revelation. The universe is often portrayed as a wheel. Outside of the wheel is the Orbis. The rim of the wheel is Aetherius. The spokes are the Aedra. In the gaps between the spokes are the waters of Oblivion. And the hub of the wheel, that is the mortal realm. Vivek escaped the mortal realm and gazed upon the wheel from side on. This showed him the hidden tower, which appeared as the letter I. Okay, I failed miserably at keeping that simple. It would take us hours to properly contextualize and explain all of that. But what's important to understand is that, by achieving enlightenment, the Sijic endeavor, one must face the fact that they are but a fictional figment of the Godhead's dream. Vivek became a god by simultaneously acknowledging that he didn't exist, while also having the ego to live on. Essentially, Vivek was lucid dreaming. The theory, therefore, is that, when Kagranak struck the heart of Lorcan with his tools, the Dwemer people achieved enlightenment as well. But the Dwarves are a logical race, and their rational minds could never have conjured up some arbitrary metaphysical means to continue existing. They simply could not wrap their reasonable minds around the reality that they did not exist. Thus, they did not lucid dream. They instead left the dream entirely. Boom. Zero sum. Gone without a trace. The flaw in this theory is that the Dwemer, despite having technology that allowed them to use some kind of telepathy, are not a hive mind. Why did the whole race vanish? Why not just Kagranak? Number 4. The Dwemer were soul trapped. This next theory does offer an answer to why it had to be the entire race that disappeared. I've argued in the past that it's possible Kagranak did not fail at all in his scheme, but rather, the martyrdom of himself and his entire race was always the intention. Kagranak was not the kind to cut corners. He was high craft lord for a reason. Yagram Bagan says, Kagranak carefully planned all his projects in advance, and recorded every step in his manufacture and testing of enchanted items. Perhaps Kagranak erred and made a terrible mistake, or perhaps he executed his plan exactly as intended. Now, the following sources aren't technically canon, but they are interesting ideas to consider. One comes from Zal, a Marakati selective stationed at Port Telvanis, who says, The Brass God is Anumidium, the Prime Gestalt. He is also called the Divine Skin. The first to see him was Kagranak of Vardenfell, the wisest of all tonal architects. Do not think as others do that Kagranak created the Anumidium for petty motivations, such as a refutation of the gods. Kagranak was devoted to his people, and the dwarves, despite what you may have read, were a pious lot. He wouldn't have sacrificed so many of their golden souls to create Anamidium's metal body if it were all in the name of Grand Theatre. What if High Priest Kagranak soul-trapped his entire race in order to power the new brass god? What if the Dwemer were to be the skin of the Numidium? The idea that the Numidium needs powerful souls to fuel it is not a far-fetched theory as there is a canon example of it happening later in the timeline. 
When Tiber Septim possessed the Numidium, his battle mage Zurin Arctus charged it with a massive soul gem called the Mantella. In order to power the walking god, the Mantella absorbed the souls of Arctus and supposedly also Izmir Wolfarth. We also see in 4th Era 201, Arniel Gain of the Winterhold College used the tall keening on a soul gem. Arniel Gain subsequently vanished. Could it be that the heart of Lorcan consumed the souls of the Dwemer to power the Numidium like an immense soul gem? And to add to this, the Brass God's immortal skin would be made from the souls of dwarves, aka dwarven metal. This could explain why the other races cannot replicate the magical metallurgy that went into creating it. And it would explain why it does not rust. If you wear dwarven metal armor, you may just be wearing the dwarves themselves. Number 5. Finally, we have the weirdest theory. The Dwemer are in an infinite time loop. What if the Dwemer didn't disappear or turn to dust? Breaking time is not unheard of in the Orbis. There have been multiple dragon breaks. Alduin has been sent forward in time. And there's even a Dwemer time machine in the ruins of Nechufencast. What if the Dwemer had initiated an infinite time loop in which they repeatedly return to the beginning of the Kalpa, like they're in New Game Plus? That would be an explanation for why they're so technologically advanced compared to all the other inhabitants of Tamriel. The choice of wording in the text, Nerevar at Red Mountain, also raises some eyebrows. When Vorin Dagoth discovered Kagranak's secret scheme, it says, House Dagoth had discovered the source of the profane and secret power of the Dwemer, the legendary heart of Lorcan, which Dumak's people had used to make themselves immortal and beyond the measure of the gods. In fact, one of their high priests, Kagranak, was building a new god so that the Dwemer could claim Resdane for their own. There are two things that jump out at me here. Firstly is the fact that it says Dumak's people had used the heart to make themselves immortal. Kagranak's plan failed, didn't it? They were not immortal at this point in the story, for the heart had not even been struck yet. Secondly, we are led to believe that the purpose of this new god is to achieve immortality and godhood, not to conquer Resdane. Both of these things can be chalked up to the wording choice of the author, and also the fact that, from a Kaima perspective, it would be reasonable to assume the Dwemer wished to rule over them. The Dunma sorcerer named Baladas Demnavani has some interesting insights into the Dwemer and the potential that they understood the mechanics of time. He says, as the books and other artifacts in Dwemer ruins rarely show signs of wear or age, I believe that the Dwemer knew of a preservative effect, perhaps a device still active which denies or controls the Earthbones governing time and decay. He also says, It was unfashionable among the Dwemer to view their spirits as synthetic constructs free, four, or forty creational gradients below the Divine. During the Dawn Era, they researched the death of the Earthbones, what we call now the laws of nature dissecting the process of the sacred willing itself into the profane. I believe their mechanists and tonal architects discovered systematic regression techniques to perform the reverse. That is, to create the sacred from the deaths of the profane. To put this all simply, Demnavani is asserting that the Dwemer did not view themselves as below the gods. They looked at the limitless divine spirits turning themselves into the limited earth bones and sought to reverse engineer the process. If the Earthbones put the laws of nature in place and attached the mortal realm to the decaying influence of time, then maybe they could retrace the steps of the gods to a point where they would be unaffected by time. The creational gradients Demnavani speaks of are the degrees of separation between god and mortal. From Etada original spirits down to Elnafe, down to mortality. Demnavani refers to Dwemer technologies as anti-creations, and that is because they are trying to reverse the degenerative steps of creation. Now, this theory ties into the theory that the Dwemer became the skin of the Numidium. The Dwemer disappear when Kagranak strikes the heart of Lorcan with his tools, and the dwarves of that Kalpa became the inimitable brass-like metal which defies time and decay. And when the Kalpa ends and the Dawn Era restarts, the Dwemer return to the mortal realm with all their creations intact, powered by the souls of the dwarves from the previous attempt to achieve divinity. Whew, I kinda broke my brain with that final theory. I'd love to hear your takes on which theory seems the most likely to you. This has been my list of five weird Dwemer disappearance theories. I hope you enjoyed it. A link to my Patreon is in the description. Please only pledge if you can afford it and really want to support the channel. Also in the description you can find links to my Discord and social media. Thanks so much for watching. I've been Drew, you've been watching Drew Mora, and I'll see you in the next one.